Welcome to K-State Online. I am Mason Vos, joined by Derek Young and Drew Galloway. Whole crew here because we now know K-State's Big 12 basketball opponents in the upcoming season. Obviously, we knew they were going to play everybody, but who were they going to play twice, both home and away? Who was the, you know, only the home opponents? Who were only the road opponents? Because that stuff matters in a college basketball season. As we kind of saw more than anything in in the Big 12 last year, I think over the last couple of years, the Big 12 has had one of the highest percentages in the country in terms of the home team winning. The the home court advantage in the Big 12 means more than any other conference on a game-by-game basis. So we now know who the Cats have and who they will be facing in both of their opponents. And I got to say, at the end of the day, I think K-State got a pretty nice draw uh, when you look at what it could have been versus what it is, and you get a lot of the the marquee teams at home. Honestly, the only top uh, seven, top eight team in the Big 12 that you're not going to get in Bramlage this year is Baylor. But outside of that, you're going to get to see KU, Iowa State, Arizona, and Houston. Uh, and then you can throw Texas Tech and Cincinnati into that category as well. Uh, and then you look at the road games, obviously – uh, we, we know that KU and Iowa State rivalries, you're going to get to see them both times. That'll be fun. Drew's personal rivalry with Cincinnati is going to be played multiple times. Uh, and then a couple of others are games that are like driving distance if you're a K-State fan. Stillwater and Fort Worth are on there, which I'll start with you, Drew, because going back a couple of weeks when we talked about how would you like to see the opponents break down, we talked about Oklahoma State and TCU being – as road games specifically because you want to be able to have road games that aren't that far away. And like, those are ones that uh, you're not going to be intimidated when you walk into Shawmire or uh, Gallagher Iba. Yeah. I think that this is probably the best schedule that Casey could ask for. I mean, you, you really look at it and KU Iowa state tough road games, but none of the other places, even Baylor doesn't really like, scare me a ton with kind of how intimidating the crowd is and the road only opponents like UCF, Utah, TCU, not like intimidating places to play either. Uh, the, I think the big takeaways though, is that the home schedule, Holy moly, it is loaded and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to see all of those teams come in and play home games. Uh, the, the one that I think is kind of like the, I don't want to say it's disappointing because it's probably an opponent that you wanted to see twice, but Arizona state twice doesn't really do a lot for me. But uh, I mean, I think that that's one where you kind of look at that as like, that's them at Oklahoma state is probably a team that you have to sweep. You you have to have a few on there that you can sweep. Right. <laughs> so that's why if, if you take away Arizona state, cause you don't want that twice, that's fine. But then you'd want to replace it with like a Utah. I think. Yeah. I don't Utah, really Colorado me. this year. Yeah. I, I, did, I didn't know what to expect from Colorado because that is an NCAA tournament team from a year ago. Yeah, they did. Uh, but what, they got two guys drafted last night in the first round. So they, so they lose a bit. I, I don't. It'll be interesting. They're in a category with probably like West Virginia uh, and BYU where there's just so many changes with what's gone on there. You, you don't have a good idea of what to expect. But The home schedule, there's no doubt about it. It is going to be, if not the best, one of the best in K-State basketball history with the fact that you're going to get teams that likely when you play them are for sure top 25 teams in Arizona, Houston, Iowa State, and KU. Uh, And then you have teams that at any point, Texas Tech or Cincinnati could be in there. Um, and not to mention that we know that there are some, you know, power conference opponents or coming to Manhattan this year in the non-con LSU will be, uh, coming to Manhattan. So it's a strong home schedule for K state. And this is something looking at last year where K state only got to play Houston on the road. They only got to play Texas on the road. That is such a significant part of this schedule where if you can kind of thread the needle perfectly, if you're only going to see somebody once, you want to be able to play them at home because if you get a road game with somebody, you want to be able to have the ability to match up with them and get that home game to kind of get back at them. Like we saw with KU and Iowa State last year, two of the better teams in the league, K-State got home and away games with them. They lost on the road, but they won the home games. And that's a significant part of this. I guess same could be said for BYU last year. K-State 
uh, did that with BYU as well. So having these home games is so, so important uh, for how you want to try and navigate in a, a schedule. And we know that K-State also has the talent this upcoming season that you get those kind of games at home and the road schedule. I mean, if we're talking neutral court games for K-State next year against the road opponents they have, we would probably say you should beat BYU, you should beat Arizona State, you should beat Oklahoma State, you should beat UCF, you should beat TCU, and you should beat Utah. That's six wins there. Now, it's road games, so you're probably not going to win all six of those, but that's a pretty good percentage of your opponents that you are without a doubt better than. And then you factor in Baylor, Iowa State, Cincinnati into the mix. BYU, how do you know how that, that'll all go? So I think I think this is one of those where K-State has an opportunity now that if the talent produces like we think it can, the schedule is going to give them the opportunity to be in the Big 12 race for a long time, similar to what happened for Iowa State last year. Like Iowa State had some built-in advantages with their schedule that let them be in that Big 12 race until the end. No doubt they were a really good team, but they didn't have to play in Allen Fieldhouse last year, and that certainly helped them getting to you know whatever other game you want to throw on their schedule instead of that. So K-State is going to have the schedule advantage this year uh, which you know you have to take advantage of in these massive leagues now when you get it, and I think K State's in position to do so. Yeah, four four things I wanted to cover ground on, and I, I agree definitely with the the entire scope that you just discussed there. One, and we can go one by one with these two and have a little bit of discussion. You touched on it, uh, perhaps being the best home schedule from an entertainment value standpoint. Ever certainly since I've covered the team in 2017, I don't remember one like this. Uh, two angles to look at it is the only team I'm like, oh man, it would have been fun to get them at home is Baylor that you don't get. That's the only one you don't get at home. You're like, that's really good that you wish you everyone else you get, you get every other projected tournament team, and even really what might be the bubble teams in West Virginia and Colorado as well. Now, maybe BYU's got a shot, I don't know. Uh, we'll see there. But so you get everyone you want at home except maybe Baylor. So from a value standpoint, season ticket holder standpoint, I think it's pretty awesome. You're going to get more than what you asked for. You're you're probably getting a discount on season tickets this year based on who the home opponents are because you've got to tack on. The LSU game will be fun too. Cam Carter comes back. That, that'll be interesting because I'm looking at this home schedule here. And like, and obviously you want the players to get up for every game, but they don't. That's just the fact of the matter. Which Big 12 games at home would be hard to get up for? The only ones that are popping up for me is Arizona State and Oklahoma State. Yeah, I think I, I think you can get up for West Virginia and Colorado because I don't think they'll be terrible. Yeah, I think that that is a good point and something that like is kind of the the undervalued thing is the get up games and you'd rather have all of your guys be able to get up for the games at home and really right. Arizona state, Oklahoma state, that that's like, that's it. And in, and in the Jerome Tang era, even last year when they did not make the NCAA tournament, those get up games at home, they still won those. They beat Baylor, Kansas, Villanova, right? So this is his wheelhouse too. I think if you're, if we're talking in terms of, uh, like best home schedules in in K State basketball uh, and how we're we're viewing it. The twenty, I guess it would be twenty seventeen eighteen season. So the the Elite Eight year, that one would maybe be like in the conversation just because of like they played a ton of top ten teams at home that season. Uh, West Virginia was number six in the country when they came to Manhattan. Uh, Oklahoma was number four with Trey Young when they came. TCU was a top 25 team. Obviously, the game with KU, uh, number seven, Texas Tech, came to Manhattan as well. So that one, but you you just don't have the depth that you have. Was that, was that national runner-up, Texas Tech? Yes, it was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that, that makes sense. That, But you didn't go into that. You were thinking it was going to wind up that way. With Correct. That. Yeah. 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 You definitely and, didn't go into it going, oh, yeah, this is going to be a, this is going to be a good one. And there were some, like, there were some duds on there. Uh, I mean, they, Georgia was a home game that year. So I, I think that this is – and this may just be life in the Big 12 moving forward because I think many times you're going to see this and get this uh, because even if you'd say, okay, we'll take away a home game with Arizona or Houston, 
you're probably replacing it with somebody like Baylor. And and Baylor obviously is a marquee opponent in college basketball now. So the schedule is is set up in a fun way for fans. And this is a good reminder as well as to why non-conference scheduling is lessening in terms of high-profile games that are being added for K-State and numerous other schools throughout the country. It's a much lighter load in non-conference play uh, because now the Big 12 is going to play 20 conference games and 10 of them are going to be at home. And in terms of you're also looking for competitive advantages, that's what we have been talking about. Also why this lines up for, for Kansas State. So you look at who you're playing away only and who you're playing at home only. The away only games, you want those to be, for the most part, some of the more teams that you're not afraid of, right? Because you don't get them at home, so you want them to be winnable games on the road. So the road-only opponents, the best-case scenario is you're playing a bunch of teams that are you can beat on the road. And with the exception of Baylor, and I know Drew said Waco doesn't scare him that much, Foster Pavilion I think is a little bit different. I do think there's an atmosphere and environment there now. So I'm not scared of I'm not scared of Waco either. <laughs> but the other four could all miss the NCAA tournament. So it actually sets up perfectly when you got to talk about <laughs> you're only playing road only against BYU, UCF, TCU, and Utah. The only two teams that maybe can make the tournament, I would think, out of that group is TCU and BYU, but I don't know that those are locks either. So that sets up nicely for Kansas State as well. Yeah, it turns into – like with the road only teams, you probably want to win at least two, maybe even three because of how this is falling and the preseason. Now, I don't know what record you have to shoot for to win the Big 12. Um, and I know there's if there's rival fans listening to this, they're probably <laughs> rolling their eyes thinking Kansas State has dreams of winning the Big 12. I think with this roster, you certainly still can talk about it and discuss it, especially when this schedule sets up in this fashion. So I don't know what – is it 14? Is it 15? That's probably the neighborhood. I think that it would take, I don't know the exact uh, number that they probably 15, I would imagine, is almost a guarantee. I don't know that anyone's going 16 and four in this league. I think that would be pretty, just, that's an uphill climb. So if you can get to 15, I think that would require you winning three of those away only games. And, and, and I think that's doable. I mean, We've all been to Fort Worth, Shulmire Arena. That place isn't scaring anyone. Utah shouldn't be any good. UCF, and then it beat KU there in Orlando last year. So um, an inferior KU team compared to what we've seen from the Jayhawks before, of course. But still, BYU is probably a middle-of-the-road Big 12 team, but I think it is tough to win in Provo. Well, the the road games, that's the real important part here because – we know K-State, even last year, they were good enough at home to compete with anybody in the Big 12. They, they basically proved that. They went 7-2 and two in home games, and their two losses, they, they didn't get up or, or show up for the Oklahoma game. And then TCU, they lost on kind of just a, a lucky three at the buzzer for TCU, uh, but they took care of everybody else at home. The road is what killed them. They, they were 1-8 and eight on the road. And their only road win came the first road game they had in the season at West Virginia. And then you think about so many of those teams that they didn't get a crack at at home. Houston being one of them. Texas Tech was certainly one that you would have felt like you could have stolen if it was at home. Cincinnati, same type of boat last year. I mean, those were games that came down to the wire that K-State lost on the road that you go, okay, if that's in Manhattan, you probably win that. So the, the road-only schedule this year is probably a little bit more fair for K-State if you go and kind of take a peek at what they faced last season in terms of, okay, we only go to Cincinnati, we only go to Texas Tech. It's it's all kind of evening out a little bit better now. Uh, so that's that's good news for K-State. And, I, again, I really just – I don't have many issues with the way that the, the schedule ended up playing out for them. So uh, I think K-State should feel pretty fortunate and now uh, – I mean, really, the, all that's left is making sure you go out and take care of business and the advantages that you have. And then for the home rolling games, when you're looking at it from a competitive advantage, you want to dodge the more raucous environments, the toughest places to play. You're probably not going to do that very often because you're going to be playing in Allen Fieldhouse every year. I think I'd be pissed off if they probably didn't make that home and home every year. I assume that they will. 
Um, and then, to be honest, I think Kansas State and Iowa State should play twice every year. So I'm glad that those are both home and away, to be quite honest. But everywhere else, you kind of like the way it happened because you don't have to go to Arizona. You don't have to go to Houston. You don't have to go to – and two, and I think we would all agree, two of the more underrated atmospheres in all of college basketball, Morgantown and Lubbock. Yeah. It, it, it's, again, like you couldn't have – probably asked for um a easier from a relative standpoint schedule than what k-state got because of the environments that you're dodging with the home only teams and the environments that you're going to with the road only teams that this is kind of where it sets up for like i don't want to say like the big 12 championship like aspirations but this is a schedule where k-state could win 13 14 games and be in contention yeah, that, that's where I was going to go next. I mean, you look at the road games. I think I think any conversation has to start on the road because we know that you at home, six, I think you should be able to protect your home court a majority of the time. I I think the the bar for any Big Twelve team that is average or anything above that is probably losing two, maybe three now that it's a ten game home schedule, but. So you're already baking in at least seven wins with your home schedule. Uh, yeah, I, I would say because it's so hard to win on the road, and I, I tend to think 15 and five might be your Big 12 winner. I don't know. I if think it's so. Two, I don't know if it's 14 and six, maybe 15 and five. I think you got to go at least nine and one at home. Yeah, and because yeah. then I like I look at the road schedule for K State and you got to find uh, six. Look, I think that they can. I think they can win every single one of those games except one of them on the road this upcoming <laughs> season. I wonder uh, which one that is. Well, Wells Fargo <laughs> Arena or whatever it is now in Tempe is uh it can be a tough place to play 15 years ago when James Harden was there. Uh even no, if you write off losses on the road to Iowa State, Kansas, and Baylor, there's still seven left. And I think you gotta get yeah. six of them. Yeah, that's what that's where I'm going. I think I think you're looking at K State has the opportunity. They will get the chance to win five, six games on the road this year. Um, and like realistic chances, whereas like we can look at that schedule and say, OK, if we're just in, in fairness going, we think K-State could win in Waco or Ames or whatever, but most teams will not. Those are teams at the top of the league. It's tough, whatever. There's three losses baked in there already. Yep. The benefit is you're not getting Arizona and Houston or Texas Tech in yep. that category as well. Because those and would be three more. Yep. Exactly. So then you're already at six and you're behind the eight ball because anybody that goes below 500 on the road in Big 12 play, you instantly take yourself out of the running because a four, you'd have to go perfect at home. And even then, 14 wins may not win you a conference title. I think 15 is probably, on a, in an average year, going to be the bare minimum you need to win the league. Uh, and K-State is going to have that opportunity, again, because of the talent is there. And it may not be one of the top two or three most talented teams in the league, although I think that it could be when all is said and done. They are going to have the schedule element to it. And even more so than football, the schedule is a big deal in basketball because we know how the environments are and everything else that plays into it. So uh, I, K-State's going to get a real chance. And that honestly should be the biggest takeaway for everybody with the schedule outside of, hey, you're going to get some fun at home if you're a K-State fan. But K-State is going to have a realistic chance to be a Big 12 title contender this season. Yeah, I mean, without context, and this is just projection, without knowing anything of how the year will go, so you got to go probably 9-1 and one at home because it's tough to win on the road, I think. And 9-1 and one at home with that home slate is tough too, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but uh, you need to find six on the road, and that will get you to 15-5 and five if that were to happen. I think it's fair to say Iowa State, Kansas, and Baylor write them off as road losses. That's to get you three. But I think you could write down four where you say you better not lose on the road too. So that gets you to four and three. And that's Arizona State, Oklahoma State, stale environment, new coach. I would say UCF. I mean, that's fine. They're so okay. They, they overachieved last year. You still got to win there. And Utah. So – you, you yep. get wins at UCF, Utah, Arizona State, and Oklahoma State. Lose to Iowa State, KU, and Baylor. You're sitting at four and three. So it'll come down to those three, I would say, almost toss-up games on the road. 
at Cincinnati because you lost there last year already. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily the most intimidating place, but it was a solid atmosphere, and they'll have a good roster. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe Drew would say, don't go <laughs> over the board. No, I think we I'm all agree they will have a good roster. It's yeah, just a fine game. roster. But the three toss-up games, if you if it all goes to plan, where it will determine how much you compete, assuming you go nine and one at home, is Cincinnati, BYU, and TCU on the road, in my opinion. Um, TCU, again, not a good road environment, the worst of those three, but probably still a roster capable of beating you. Yeah, yeah. And, of, and of those three, TCU is probably the most consistent program. Like, I, I just... I'll have to see it to believe it still with Cincinnati. And then I, I think that with BYU, new coach, first time head coach, I think that that's kind of a, a wait and see kind of thing too. So I think that the, Saunders is back though. Watch out. <laughs> so I think that of those three, probably TCU is the toughest, but if they can find a way to win six road games, th- this is the schedule that it would take. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. So, uh, that's where it is. Uh, last question for each of you guys. Uh, what is your favorite game on the schedule and your least favorite game on the schedule? And you can use whatever criteria for that in your head that you want. If you think that's a crappy road trip or uh, that team doesn't do anything for me coming to, to Manhattan, uh, what is your your favorite and your least favorite outcome of this 2025 Big 12 basketball schedule? I guess I should say 24-25 since – they're going to play some games before New Year's. Can we do favorite home, worst home, favorite road, worst road? Yep, because that's what I, 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 I like that more. Uh, but Kate, you can't count the KU game. Okay, yeah, and I home, wasn't home, you can't count KU road. You can't count Iowa State because I think that might come into play there for people. That's true. That, uh, that's fair. Yeah, I wouldn't count, and you can't count any of the KU games, or can you count road KU? You can if you want to, but you're a real <laughs> sick, a sick idiot if you yeah. think that. But what if uh, – yeah, okay. Home, favorite <laughs> home, you can't pick KU. Um, I got to go Arizona. But because that might be the only – that might be the one atmosphere this year that could potentially rival KU. Now, it won't be as full of hatred as what it will be when KU is there. Nothing will ever – go up to that notch but in terms of just excitement intrigue like engagement i think that arizona game will probably be the only time we see bramlage get that close to a ku game that's what i feel um but i will say honorable mention and i know it sounds weird arizona state because i want to see bobby hurley's sideline (laughs) antics in person um the least favorite home game I guess I guess it would almost have to be Oklahoma State. Um, even though I like the old Big 8 rivalries, that one's just it's probably – it's as bad as Arizona State but without the head coach entertainment. So I would go Oklahoma State being the least fun. On the road side, I guess I'm trying to look at it from my perspective and there's not a whole lot that entertained me, which that's – we're saying and not having a this challenging of a road schedule is interesting. You know, it'd be interesting maybe see Foster Pavilion and Waco for the first time. But I am going to see say KU. Maybe I'm a sicko because I think this K-State roster, this might be the one that goes into Lawrence and wins, right? So I'll say KU for the my favorite road game or the one that it has my eye the most. The le- the one the least, probably Utah. I think that's going to be a pretty rough team and and i don't know that i'm you know so excited to go to go to salt lake city to watch a basketball game right i don't know yeah i mean if you're going to salt lake city to watch a basketball game you'd probably rather go see the jazz yeah <laughs> so yeah utah probably the least favorite but um or because arizona state like I, you got the the bobby hurley element like that makes it interesting <laughs> uh i'll say favorite home game houston because i think that Houston, kind of like Arizona, I think that it could get pretty amped inside Bramlage, and I think that Houston will probably be in that top five, top ten kind of area. So I think that that'll be a fun environment to be in. I, I thought uh, about. I just wonder about them without Jamal Shed a little bit. 
Yeah, I, I kind of have that worry too, but you took Arizona and I'm uh, we're, we're trying to be different here. Yeah. And then least favorite home game. Oh God. Uh, gotta be Oklahoma state. Cause I just think that they might be really bad. Yeah. And Steve Lutz was kind of a boring hire too, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that they, they might be really bad. So we'll go Oklahoma state favorite road game. Yeah, I will stick with you, D.Y., and go Baylor just because I think – or I'll go against you and go a little bit Baylor because I think that going to Foster Pavilion will be fun. And I'm there's no shot that I would say that KU is my favorite road <laughs> game of, after seeing that all of my life. And least favorite, oof. Uh, I'll go I'll go UCF because I think that they overachieved even last year. So I think that they might really take a step back and be worse. Uh -huh. I know I went Utah, but man, I almost picked Gallagher Iba for least favorite because I don't. I really don't like going to Gallagher Iba. Oh man, I, I I like I, I like GIA. I, I I thought about doubling up with Oklahoma State too. <laughs> I, I, did not like I really I really don't mind Gallagher Iba. Uh, here's what I'll say about UCF: is yeah, last year they probably did overachieve a little bit at times, and now like. There's a real scenario where UCF's best roster in the Big 12, as long as Johnny Dawkins is there, was year number one. Because there was talent on that team last year, um, and some of it's gone now. I, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. But my favorite home game this this upcoming season for K State, um, it's probably it's. I think it's got to be Iowa State outside of KU because I think e any of those games are going to be fun, but. This is where there's the beauty and like the regionality of college sports that we don't have enough is you're going to see a higher percentage of Iowa State fans in Bramlage than any other fan base that will be as a road team the entire season. And there was nothing more enjoyable last year than watching a bunch of clone fans sit there and watch their team completely no show in Manhattan, despite still having the chance to win the Big 12 title that afternoon. It was the most enjoyable thing of last basketball season, probably uh, in terms of sights and sounds from the crowd. So I'd put Iowa state on there. My least favorite home game. I'll probably say West Virginia. Now that Huggins is gone. Like, I, I don't know. West Virginia is just kind of boring. I, I don't really care about them anymore. I have zero interest in that. It doesn't feel like a big game anymore. Um, and K state's had pretty good success against West Virginia at home recently. So Get West Virginia out. You guys are right about Oklahoma State, though. Oklahoma State is a game that you just show up when it's a home game and go, all right, it's going to be a fun 15-point win. You're giving them the big eight respect, though. I get it. That, I, well, you have it's to be a little different. I'm just telling you, West Virginia, I, you know, I don't care as much anymore. A sneaky one that it's hard to care for. The only reason why we kind of care is because Drew has a rivalry is Cincinnati. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of excited for that one. I, I I think I have a lot mentally at stake, like Drew, uh, with K State success against Cincinnati this year. Uh, my my favorite road game this upcoming year. I I will also throw in. I, I won't use it as my official pick because you guys have both already said it. But Waco really? is exciting to go see the new Foster Pavilion and and how that environment might differ from the Farrell Center. Um, outside of that, though. I mean, I do like going to Gallagher Iba, maybe because it's an easy drive for me, and uh, <laughs> I just I don't know. It's it's pretty fun, uh, but I'll say Cincinnati because I thought I thought Cincinnati really nice arena. They packed it in last year, um, and you know K State ended up losing, but I still thought that, like it's a pretty fun trip, and I think that's one that if you're a, a K State fan that didn't do it last year and you're like kind of want to go to a road Big Twelve basketball game. Cincinnati would be the spot to do it. I mean, it's a little bit of a drive, but we we pulled it off last year. Mason uh, just wants more skyline. Chili. No, I don't. I don't want more skyline. <laughs> I no, I'd cut my tongue out before I I did that. Um, and then my least favorite road game this upcoming season, it's probably TCU. That's just one of those that's such a get in get out type of game because they're going to beat the crap out of you there's going to be five people in the stands and you're still going to, you're still going to walk out of there like, Oh my gosh, that, that was a tough road game and nobody even cares about this team. So I would say TCU is uh, the, the road game that I could do without. And show my arena kind of like is lame. So yeah. I get that. It plays tricks on your eyes too. Cause it's got the low ceiling, the weird color. 
Yeah. But I guess I, I turn up for that one a little bit internally. So this might be my Cincinnati one for you guys, just because I have a, like, I just do not like Jamie Dixon. So like, I always want that one a little bit more. Yeah, I I I, I like Jamie Dixon. Uh, depending he's on just the like, day, he's he's probably the, he might be, on the day. He, he he just might be the biggest prick in the Big Twelve of all coaches in the Big Twelve. My my favorite Jamie Dixon thing is he's going to go into a press conference and he's going to tell you exactly what happened and what went wrong. But then end every wow. sentence by saying, uh, but but I don't know. And just kind of like trail off like that. Like he's gonna give you very specific things that he knows happened in that game. And like, but I don't know. Uh so I yeah, I I, I get it, but not a that's, fan. Yeah. All right. Well that is a, you call basketball coach it, so he was new I, last year. They they can Chris Koviak or whatever his name was, uh, the big tall guy that was there. See, not, none of us know his name, so that has <laughs> to be the, the one we care the least about. You don't even know. I, that's the only team you don't know who their coach is. I couldn't pick him out of a up. lineup. Like you could you pull up five. Up. You could pluck if you five. Have to look okay. the coach's name, they don't know. Okay, matter. we're going to just – you guys talk a little bit more about the schedule while I organize a game real quick. I'm going yeah, yeah. to put up three guys, and <laughs> you're going to have to tell me which one is the Utah basketball coach. <laughs> like, but, I, I okay. genuinely don't even know what his name starts with. Of, of those road teams, which which coach do you like the most? Which coach do you dislike the most? Why? Oh, well, we buy Mason some time. Like the most, it's got to be Scott Drew. Yeah, I was gonna say that's easy. That's Scott Drew. Okay, you can't yeah. pick Scott Drew. Nobody hates okay. Scott Drew. <laughs> <laughs> not Scott Drew. Oh God. Uh, Who do you like the most? Oh, dude, it's not Wes Miller. He's like, no. <laughs> he's like a caffeine addict or something. So he's weird. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay. I, I don't know if I like him the most, but the most entertaining. Like I got Bobby Hurley's my boy. Yeah, I was about to say, is Bobby Hurley the answer? Because I don't know really about Kevin, Kevin Young, other than he was in the NBA. Um, that means he's Steve probably going to be a very. Russell's boring. Guy. Johnny Dawkins is boring. Bill Self is Bill Self. I don't know who I hate worse though between T.J. Otzberger and Jimmy Dixon. Oh, Otz for sure. Okay, all right. Uh, the game is ready. Before you guys just piss off every team in the big 12 with hating on their coaches relentlessly uh all right let me oh actually the game's not totally ready let me let me throw these fine looking gentlemen oh hang on i gotta go back and save the other one real quick um what home, what home coach do you like the most um well jerome tang <laughs> yeah. yeah jerome tang what <laughs> home coach do i like the most um you know, Kelvin Sampson, he's a good good dude. Yeah, I'd go mm. Kelvin. Yeah, I think that's probably the answer. Kelvin. Oh, no. Oh, McCaslin? Game here. Yeah. What do, I, what do I dislike the most? Is it, all right, it's all right. <laughs> well, we, we, Ots again. Okay, all right, here we go. Uh, people will hate that I say this, but uh, – most people know it at this point. My actual favorite road coach that's going to come in is Bill Self. I, I find him to be very funny. And just like, it's uh, if he wasn't wearing it like a KU logo all the time, I think a lot more people would actually like him. Yes, he's a slime ball, but I, he's in an industry where you have to be a slime ball. I don't, I don't mind him. He's um, just an aw shucks guy. He's got good press conferences. So I, I do like Bill I, Self. I, he yeah. cracks me up. I don't mind him on a personal level at all. Um, and I don't think I'd be able to pick Tad Boyle out of a lineup. So <laughs> I don't think I could either. <laughs> oh, really? You guys don't think so? No, I don't I, think so. I feel like Tad I think Boyle, he's old. Is he yeah, old? I feel like he's kind of old. Okay. Well, nobody, nobody <laughs> look at at these coaches now because I'm about to put a bunch up for you uh, that you yeah. can that you can go and look at. So we're gonna we're gonna quiz both of you. Uh, just write down on a piece of paper near you uh, what number you think the Utah coach is. So I'm not going to say anything to you. I'm just going to slowly cycle through, or you can type it in your phone. I don't. Well, I, don't I can prove it to you which one I picked. So there. Okay. All right. Are you ready for bald coach number one? <laughs> bald coach number one. So 
I, that doesn't scream Utah to me. I don't, I, I, I don't even know who that is. I wonder why, <laughs> D.Y. I wonder why. That seems like a not good road to go down by you. Okay, that was Coach 1. This is Coach 2. Okay. He's got him. You, all the time. you got the look. Yeah. Okay. Well, I grab I grab pictures of them from schools they're not currently at. Oh. Um, okay. Coach number three. Yeah, he's kind of an ugly looking dude. Oh, that's not <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. And then coach number four. So okay. Okay. I'm uh, to to like Chad Loyal. All right, you guys got it. You need me to go through that again one more time, real fast. Uh, there's yeah, coach can four. You, can you, we do this again. Coach three, coach two, coach one. Okay. Those okay. are – write them down. Give me your guesses, and uh, I'll let Drew go first. Uh, I think that it is coach number two. Okay. D.Y., what is your guess? I said two as well. I circled two. I thought about four, but I circled two. All right. I well, four is Tad Boyle. That's a good call, Drew. I did not have him until you said I couldn't pick Tad Boyle. I was like, well, he's also a bald coach. Uh, number four is Tad Boyle. Okay. Number one is Tommy Amaker. Uh, so, you know, had had some that, good times that, at Harvard. That, that, I, I know what Tommy Amaker looks like. That that, that does not look like Tommy <laughs> Well, he Amaker. doesn't look like Utah, according to you. <laughs> well, uh, he doesn't. This, this is Craig Smith, the head coach of the Utah Utes. Okay. And uh, this fella, I don't know his name. Uh, he's the head basketball coach at uh, a high school. No, no, at Saddleback College, uh, wherever that might be. I just I googled bald basketball coaches, and he came up. Um, I don't know his name. His name is Andy Ground. Uh, he is the the basketball coach at uh, what did I say Saddleback College. Um, I don't know. He must be famously bald because they wrote an April Fool's Day story about him growing hair. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> that's yeah. I'm I'm looking up a little bit on Saddleback now to so see. So it's like Chaka Smart. He grew hair. Okay, Saddleback. <laughs> it's a junior college. Uh, and they are the they are the Bobcats. Maybe I've got the wrong Saddleback College, though, now that I'm I'm looking at this. Oh, the EA Sports, and I know we're, this is off topic, but this is surprising. So Kansas State didn't break the EA Sports top 25 offense, but they did for defense. <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, I probably wouldn't have gone that route, but uh, yeah, I think, let's see. No, nope, this seems like they might be in California. So that's where Saddleback College is. And uh, good on you guys. You can indeed pick Craig Smith out of a lineup of bald coaches. Apparently, I can't Tad Boyle because he was my second guest for Craig Smith. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's uh, that's that's. You, you should have had us guess his name too, Craig yeah, Smith. I, very I, generic. I, I, now I know it was Craig Smith. I remember knowing that, but at the time I did not. Yeah, well, there, there you have it. Those are uh, your bald head coaches, and K State only has to look at. Craig Smith's shiny dome one time, and it's on the road in Salt Lake City next season. So for Drew it's Galloway, yeah, that's true. He gets to come to Manhattan. He's going to get the reflection off of the, the lights there. Uh, all right. For Drew Galloway, Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. If you want more on the Cats and more reaction to the basketball schedule that just came out, head over to KSO, add on three, and uh, we'll keep you in the know there.